What else has Tony Khan been involved with? Oh, he's smarter than Ted Turner. Have you heard about this? I did not see that quote. Let me try to find that one while you tell me what it is. I have other quotes. I did not see that one. Please. And again, who was it? Jesus. I'm trying to think of who was it and what the quote was, but basically it it was applied before in in relation to ECW and Paul Heyman and their their under their underground movement uh, in the 90s the un, the the underground darling the revolution the anti-establishment sooner or later becomes the establishment is Tony Khan now getting a little too big for his britches and just now uh, he's announcing that he's richer than Vince McMahon. He's smarter than Ted Turner. He's the booker of the year. And at some point, is there going to be some backlash from people going, even the AEW faithful, like hold, hold on cowboy. You, you know, and what do you do in your spare time? Cure cancer. Is he going to be on the next space flight? What? A, well, I mean, he, you know, and, and different things are different things. With the WWE stuff, he's fighting back, and I actually like what he's doing there. So I got no problem yeah, but, with, but, with that. But, but here's the thing. He's, he's just, he's running away with it. What he said in response to whatever, I can't remember, but he said that he knows more than Ted Turner ever. Ted Turner didn't know 1% of what he knows about here. wrestling. All right, we'll go ahead and read the exact quote then. Well, the exact quote, and to put it in proper context, and again, I'm new to this story, there was an article by Wrestling Inc., and the headline is Backstage Talk on How WWE Feels About Tony Khan Spending Big to Keep AEW Going. I'm assuming there's some kind of quote in that article comparing him to Ted Turner. From the well, WWE yeah, yes, side. Yes, and basically, and it was somewhat of the same response is that they're going to spend and spend and spend until finally it, it collapses. Tony retweeted that and he remarked, I've never met Ted Turner. It's very possible Ted Turner is smarter than me, but he didn't know 1% of what I know about professional wrestling or WCW would still be on TNT slash TBS. <laughs> AEW is here to stay. Watch Rampage live tonight on TNT or watch TNT app on your phone or any device. So then it turned into a plug. But I don't see this as a, as a giant shot no, at no, Ted Turner. But, but I also don't see it as completely accurate. If he knew what I knew, it would be no, on the I, air. And no, I, if he knew what you knew, maybe he wouldn't have fucking made the deal with Time Warner. That's really if, what... If, that's the thing is, that's what I'm saying. It's not a giant shot at Ted Turner like Ted Turner would give a shit. It's the point is it makes Tony look bad because... What Ted Turner knew or didn't know about professional wrestling, Ted Turner could have been fucking Toots Mont, and Ted Turner could have been Vince Russo. It didn't make any difference because he didn't have a single thing to do with the company on a day-to-day -day basis or any kind of basis, except to, for a photo op every once in a while. It was part of the empire and the people that were running WCW within that empire are the ones that he should be saying, because he did. He probably does know a hundred times more about wrestling and Jim Hurd did. But to to just go and say, well, I'm I'm smarter about wrestling than Ted Turner makes it look like that Ted Turner was running a wrestling company and it makes Tony look like a mark for thinking that. And again, I like Tony fighting back, but but to your point, this does seem defensive for no good reason. Yes, and it is it's like it's he say he's starting to sound like Uncle Dave when anybody questions his opinions um but anyway he's he's smarter than ted turner faster than a speeding bullet more powerful than a basement booker it's tony khan slow down cowboy you're doing good so far but don't get in over your head and by the way when do the ratings for the programs that we're going to talk about here in a little while the friday night showdown this week when does that come out it's a weekend so it may be monday gonna, but i'm not sure if we have to wait till Monday, this will be interesting. But I don't, I don't think it was. You know, a, they tried everything that they could do, and we'll talk about it here in a little while. But I don't think it was going to be a runaway on either side. We'll see what happens. But I think Tony ought to settle down a little bit and not get too much heat on himself because all of his 
minions like him talking like that, but if he gets too grand, the average people are going to go, all right, this he already is coming off a little fucking markish every time he opens his mouth on an interview because he's got that teenage boy voice and that machine gun delivery about all the markish things that he dreams up. To a point, but again, I, my attitude is, you can't say that WWE is not trying to fuck with him and hasn't since the beginning. If he's going to fight back and say comments oh, yeah. like that, and by the way, they're great comments. You want to get under Vince's skin? I've got more money than you. I could do this all day. <laughs> and we'll, we have the exact quote. We'll get to that in a second. But I actually like that. I am happy that he's fighting back and doing it the way he is. I'm not saying I'm not saying he shouldn't tell Vince he's got more money than he does or his daddy does one or the other. Uh, that's good. I'm saying, let's not bring fucking Ted Turner into this and just make it sound like that. He's, he's making himself sound like he's the grandest television producer of our age suddenly because he's taken advantage at this point of a, of a a billionaire that's rapidly becoming more senile by the day. Well, here's a couple other quotes. And apparently this is from an article in the New York post. Uh, the interviewer is Joseph. Stasuski, I'm so sorry for what I've just done to your name, Joseph, but I tried. You think Joseph is listening? I think he may. He may say, oh my God, Jim Cornette's going to tear me apart. But uh, there's a couple of questions here. I'll read you the question and the answer. Joseph, our pal Joe, said, referring to that tweet Tony sent out, we talked about the other day about the Friday Night War. The tweet you sent out said it was part of your business plan to recreate this competition. This back-and-forth spirit that was there in the 90s, and here's Tony's answer, in wrestling, we're worth more against each other, and we're better off against each other. I believe there's a greater value in the wrestling market when we're fighting, and people want to see competition in wrestling. I think it's one of the reasons people lost interest in wrestling was because there was not true competition for 20 years. Now, with AEW in the mix, and competition back in wrestling, I think there are more people excited about wrestling than there have been in a long time with this free agent movement and good shows. At the end of the day, it has to be good shows. Through the 90s, there were a lot of great wrestling shows. Every week, every month, there would be great stories and great matches, and you couldn't miss it. I think it's starting to get that way again. So before I move on any further, any thoughts on that initial question and answer? Well, part of this is the problem, is that Tony thought... The 90s were about great matches and great stories. What didn't he mention there? What didn't he mention? Bueller? What didn't he mention? Great stars. He's a fan like the other AEW fans are fans of that attitude era horseshit that we had to sit through, the hot shotting and the bullshit and the nonsense that that ilk of people believes is what was driving the Attitude Era. What drove the Attitude Era was the competition between the two companies that people believed and knew was real and could see it play it out on TV and the top four or five guys on each fucking side. Austin and Rock, and on the other side, there's fucking... At various fucking points, Goldberg and fucking Hogan and the NWO or whatever. And now people have romanticized, especially Tony Khan has romanticized it. A lot of the fucking booking, especially in the in the WCW, with their bookings what put them out of business, but even in the WWF, remember, it was shit stain in his crash TV. The stories were caca in a lot of cases. The booking was bleh. The matches were shit. But the top four or five guys on each side, their matches, their promos, everything they did was gold because they were big stars and they were over. And that's the reason why Vince won the war because he concentrated on his big stars and didn't let shit stain fuck them up all the way. And on the other side, Nobody was concentrating on all their big stars because each of their big stars in WCW was concentrating on themselves. And then it all went to shit. So Tony has just acknowledged everything about the Attitude Era that you don't want to repeat and nothing about the Attitude Era that you do want to repeat. 
the stars were what made it hot. The stars were what got it over and the competition between the two companies. Now they've got competition between the two companies and no stars on either side. Just phony bullshit matches that appeal to the what used to be 10% of the audience that wanted chaos and fucking, you know, just phony shit as long as it's action. That 10% is now the entire wrestling audience. Because we ran all the other ones off with all the phony shit and the lack of stars. I could go on, but I won't. Well, I have some more quotes from Tony. Before I get back to this post-interview, I'm going to do this one first because I guess... It ties in together. I just am noticing this now. This is from an interview Tony did with Robbie Fox on My Mom's Basement. I guess that's a what? show, and it sounds like the target audience as well. But wait a minute now. he's He's got $8 billion. He's appearing on a show called My Mom's Basement. Well, to be fair, I don't know that show. Maybe it's a big show. Maybe it's a show that has a big following. I, I don't know. So Maybe it's a big basement. Maybe it's a big mom. But here's the uh, quote. It's the second time they've decided to go head-to-head -head with us. I want the fans to be able to watch all the wrestling. I'll coin a phrase right now. W-Y-W. -W. Watch your wrestling. I want people to watch your wrestling. Whatever you want to watch, watch it. A lot of people have chosen to watch AEW because it's the best show. Watch your wrestling. I want people to watch everything. It's the second time they've chosen to put their wrestling head-to-head -head with mine. The last time they did it, it didn't happen overnight, but from the start, AEW consistently did better numbers than NXT, and we eventually won that war, and AEW is now the Wednesday night show, and Wednesday night Dynamite has had a great run. On Friday, they're doing a half hour head-to-head -head with Rampage, which is new. I put my show on consciously after SmackDown, knowing there was a huge audience of people that watched that show, and a lot of people are going to watch Rampage which has been a hit for TNT. They're literally going to do a half hour head to head. Oh, good Lord. That's fine. We'll see what happens. You know what, you know what Mama Cornette would have said about Tony Khan? He was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. Because she used to say that about me, and he talks more than I do. We'll see what happens. I'm not saying for sure we'll win, and maybe the odds are against us in some ways, but we're going to do the better show. I know. If you don't believe me, Watch the Go Home Raw show they did last night because it sucked. <laughs> 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 Finally, an insult there at the end, but I wanted to read that one first because he coined this phrase. And then back to the New York Post interview with uh, Big Joe. Joe's question. A lot of the AEW talk during the Wednesday Night Wars was, we concentrated it on ourselves and didn't care what the other company was doing. Does this, again referring to his tweet and I guess recent behavior, go against that? And why was this the right time to do something like this? And Tony's response is, it's a little bit different than the Wednesday Night Wars because that was from the very beginning of Dynamite. And we put our head down and it was an every week thing. This seems like pretty predatory, which is fine if that's how you want to play it. It's not outwardly how they've shown they wanted to play it. I've coined the phrase, which is W-Y-W, -W, watch your wrestling. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Whatever people want to watch, I want them to watch it. Unfortunately, if we are on at the same time, it's harder for people to watch their wrestling, at least live. <laughs> we can take commercials out of it. If you want to take the commercials out of it, I can do that too. It doesn't seem very civil, but I have more money than <laughs> they do. It doesn't seem very civil to take the commercials out of the show, but I've got more money than they do. So I can afford to do it longer than they can. But that's how we make money at the end of the day. So I was surprised when they took those out. What the? <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Look here. This is nobody is being predatory here. They AEW has a show on Friday night at 10 o'clock. WWE has one on Friday nights at 8 o'clock, normally on the Fox network that does four times, or in, in the case of the record rating that Punk got when he came back, it still twice, SmackDown does twice what Rampage normally does. But then all of a sudden, SmackDown is switched to a much smaller subsidiary sports channel for a week 
to where the the numbers, if AEW overachieves and overproduces and FS1 does just kind of what it did last time, then it'll be a, a bit of a fight. So the, the the WWE decides, well, we'll just go two and a half hours because we don't want to lose, even though we're on the equivalent of showing slides on the wall of a barn next to our network slot. We'll go 30 minutes over to try to dull their number. And so the other side says, well, we're not going to show any commercials in the first 20 minutes. Well, for the record, WWE didn't know commercials too. Okay, okay, but the point is, none, none of these things are going to put the other company out of business. And it, it, we're not even talking about bragging rights for two big shows on the same night, like when the Sheik would run the Kobo in Detroit and Bruiser would run the Olympia, and Sheik won with 12,000 people because Bruiser only got 8,000 people. It's a, it's a fucking fight between a show on Friday night at 10 o'clock on TNT and a show on FS1. It, it, it's, it, yeah, and they're bringing the fight to him. I mean, it is predatory in that way, and if he's not going to take it, he's going to immediately fight back and make it public. I think that's great. Let them know. Uh, I'm just saying it's not, it's not like anybody's going to be run out of business over this, and it's not the biggest bragging rights that anybody's ever had for either side. You protect your real estate. It's not about bragging rights. He's there. And they're saying, oh, let's fuck with... We, we can't risk the idea that <laughs> AEW would beat us in one night in the demos. We can't risk that. So let's run a half hour with no commercials. And Tony said, yeah, all right, I could do that too. You know what I mean? I think he's doing just fine here. They're going to fuck with him. They're going to be passive aggressive about it. They're going to pretend like they're not publicly. He's going to go the other way and publicly say, yeah, they're doing it. And I could do it too. And I think that's... That's what WWE needs. They need someone to fucking take it right to them. Uh, well, but they're, they're, this is a pie fight at best. I'm not disagreeing with you. It's Friday nights. Let's see when it's a Monday night fight. Let's see when it's a Sunday night fight. Let's well, see let's see when else. it's actually on, you know, cable against cable in a, a appropriate matchup or network or, or something rather than FS1. I'm, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I believe that the WWE will still beat Rampage by 150,000 viewers or more. Let's see what happens. You know what I don't know? The last time they were preempted and sent to FS1, what was on that they got preempted? I mean, this was a big baseball game, Red Sox and Astros game one. I don't know what it's been previously, because this, traditionally a game like this, if it was on another channel during a wrestling show, would take a chunk of the audience away. I don't know what the previous times they were moved and, you know, where they got a million plus people what they were actually up against. So this is the World Series. No, this is not. This is the American League oh. Championship Series. Ah, but there's more than one game of the, you said game one. Game one. It's a best of seven series and it's a best of seven series in the National League. And those two winners will play in the World Series. Well, good for them. But anyway, I still say SmackDown on FS1 by 150,000 people. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. What do you think? I'm crazy, Brian? I I don't want to say that. I wouldn't want to hurt your feelings. You, no, do you think I'm I'm mentally demented that I've lost the plot? I would never say that to you. Why are you, you so saying? So you you are coming out and saying to me just flat out, Jim Cornette, you're nuts. That's what you're saying. Well, hey, that's a good thing. Maybe I am saying that. Well, everybody wants to be nuts because of our friends at nuts.com because they have they've gone crazy lately. If you've seen all the people on Twitter, they're tweeting the the bags of white chocolate toffee cashews, and they're tweeting the boxes that are being delivered from Nuts.com because, of course, they are the best-kept secret of savvy snackers around the country. See how I did that? <laughs> they're not just for Nuts lovers anymore, folks. If you're, a, if you're a lover of Nuts, if you like to put them in your mouth and suck on them, kiss them, Loll them around over your tongue, whatever the case. It's not just nuts at nuts.com. It's an incredible variety of snacks and pantry items, candies, dried fruits, baking mixes, pasta, dried fruit, flowers, grains, and all the raw, organic, roasted, salted, and candied nuts that you could imagine in your wildest dreams. If you eat something at night and it gives you nightmares and you're dreaming about the giant nut monsters that are eating you, 
They've got even more stuff like that at nuts.com. It's a nut it's a monsters. children's nightmare. No, stop saying that. There are no <laughs> nut no, monsters. I'm, I'm telling you, if don't don't let the kids be anywhere around this stuff because it'll give them nightmares because it's so good. It's so fresh. It's so exciting. They will have wonderful dreams of dancing nuts as well as other things like dried fruit in their head. That's, no nightmares. That's right. With visions of sugar plums that are all dried out and dancing in their heads. <laughs> and then Christmas morning will come. Anyway, oh, nuts.com has gluten-free and vegan options. No, it's a family-run business that takes pride in getting you the freshest items available. Delivery is fast. Most orders ship the same day you make them, so stuff gets there fresher than the supermarket. As I mentioned, a bunch of the Cult of Cornet members have remarked on how fast it is, how fresh they are, and how tasty they are. And now you can have healthy and uh, 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 nutritious nuts pipelined to your home and for cheap. All you got to do is text EXPERIENCE to 64000. That's the word EXPERIENCE, E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E, to 64,000, that's 64 with three zeros behind it. Text experience to 64,000 and you will get free shipping on your first order from nuts.com. They will send this stuff to you absolutely free of shipping charges, ladies and gentlemen. And their prices are so low that the stuff you're going to get is worth twice as much as you're going to pay anyway. So text experience to 64,000. And hug your nuts close to you because the folks at nuts.com are going to give you these things for a fraction of what you would pay anywhere else. Terms apply. Available at nuts.com slash terms.